Welcome back to 380. This is a optional video. Uh, we're going to be constructing this gear uh, train or setup. Uh, we're going to be using the Fusion uh, script to build these gears, and we're going to be investigating things like uh, collision detection and driven joints and backlash and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's going to be fairly lumpy and maybe even a little bit error prone uh, because I'm not too worried about uh, getting this done efficiently here. It's more of a kind of a lecture. Start a new part. We'll just save this in a spot. I've got some in my V control V here. And it's from Mott, it's our old textbook. We're just using it to supply uh, numbers. Cover up our data panel. Now, let's have a look here. Before we get all this stuff, if we just have a look at this sketch here. Sketch is used, is used here to guide the layout of the gears. So we're just gonna replicate that on, the, on our new file. Let's go ahead and do that. It's on the ZY plane. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to toggle on construction here with the X. Oh, we're not in metric. Uh, as a point here, if you're trying to finish a line without having to press escape, just double click the end. Let's change our document to inch. Mention that guy at 4.5. Continuing online. If we want here, we can type six. And gives us a fairly nicely controlled sketch. Next is a circle. See, still toggling, uh, sorry, still with uh, construction toggled on. And we're going to do some points here. A uh, point, I've already added it to the shortcuts list, so I'll just be using it. Just need two additional points for the other two gears. Can add another point here to make it easy to see. If I could actually add the point. There we go. <laughs> it's there. So uh, now we're after some dimension for this. Uh, the important point here is the order of this clicking. Uh, it's, you have to do it in a, a way that makes sense. Uh, the external to the internal dimension then to the next measured point, 120 degrees. And just move things around so we can see what's going on. Finish the sketch, give it a name. And we're looking good. Now let's try making a gear here. So under utilities, add-ins, you'll notice the shortcut here is shift S. Try that. Uh, strangely, this one has lots of, there's a grip on each corner unlike some of the dialogues in Fusion, and you'll see different things, sample scripts. You can write your own. You can download them off the web, all that sort of stuff. Basically, these are just kind of macro instructions on making things. Double click is easy. We're in that imperial part, so we're not metric, but imperial. Gives you a sort of synopsis of what's going on here. Pressure angle. Um, can be custom, but normally you want to go with one of these three. The most normal option is 20 degrees, which is a happy medium between the more vertical 14 and a half and the more pyramidal uh, 25. Diametral pitch is kind of a scaling tooth per inch zoom thing almost. Uh, you kind of have to be told this. Uh, we'll try it a couple different ways here actually. We're we'll starting with 10. Now, Number of teeth, notice number of teeth and 
diameter pitch are connected into pitch diameter. Simply number of teeth divided by 10. Nice. So if I change number of teeth, our first gear actually has 60 teeth. Six, no surprise there. Uh, going backwards here, the gear thickness will go with one. Sorry, not completely backwards. Uh, put a two inch hole in. And you'll see we're getting an error here. So it has to be less than 0.59. This is the gap right now in the, in the root of the teeth. So let's go for something like 0 0.02. Error disappears. Backlash, we're gonna come back to. Just build that guy. There it is. Nice, it just plops it right in the middle. Now because this is programmatic and our automatic, algorithmic, um, it just places it always in the same spot, which is on the X, Y plane. We have to move it ourselves later. There's a bunch of things that have happened here. So it essentially just goes through and does this for us. This is how these macros are programmed. Python works. There's our, uh, that's our pattern. So it's doing one tooth at a time. Let's have a look at that sketch. Actually, we don't need to look at it. We can just show it. So that's the tooth. Now, so where is it? It's a bit here, inside the spur gear, inside the sketches. It's usually sketch two. You can see here the involute is made up of a series of splines, which are all joined. So that's how it's doing it. So that's what it's doing. Now, what is backlash? That's the first question. So given all this, we end up with one uh, outcome. We can do this again with, I'm just gonna rebuild this gear and we'll end up with another gear, which looks more or less the same, it'll be slightly different. So shift S, spur gear, 60. Now let's put a backlash in of a hundredth or 10th out. Everything else the same. It doesn't change anything, pitch diameters or anything like this. It looks like it's more or less overlapped. Let's have a look at that sketch. So we have two teeth, sorry, two spur gears. Show both sketches. Sketch two most usually for both. There they are. Ah, there it is. Now, what is this really measuring? Uh, there's a lot of like Wikipedia, hold on here. I think I still have it going. Dangerous. Where is Wikipedia? The backlash is essentially measured along the pitch circle. Now, where's our pitch circle? Back to fusion. Uh, each of these actually gives us a pitch circle. It's usually the third sketch. You can see it's the same. So here we have the two gears and the backlash is actually moving the tooth outside face along the pitch circle. Let's not get into exactly how far it's moving, but this will actually give us some chance to have the gears not touch. If we have zero backlash, the next gear will mesh perfectly and will touch. This may or may not be what we want. Um, and tends to wear I don't know, I was told it wears gears fairly quickly, um, but once they wear in, uh, they tend to make their own sort of idealized backlash. It's up to you and it's also up to where you work uh, and what your industrial habits are. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead here and go for zero backlash. So I'm just gonna undo that last gear, just undoing through. So zero backlash, we will have the gears actually touching. Now let's think about that. Let's not do that. I'm gonna bring it back. Let's start from scratch. <laughs> Here we go. So let's get all our teeth, let's get our whole set of gears made up and we're gonna go with, let's, let's say a hundredth backlash. That does make sense. Let's do that. So we don't have to have this one showing. So we can press Shift S. Spur gear. 
uh, 20 degrees again because we did undo we've lost our setup so 10 60.02 gear thing is one whole size two backlash let's go for 0 0.01 it's quite a lot of backlash doesn't matter it'll be because we're just doing modeling here we'll be able to see what this looks like try and figure out what this is so 0 0.01 I'm going to take a little screenshot of this. We won't be able to see this, but then I'll at least know what's going on. So, if I could use my own operating system here. <laughs> uh, you can't see what I'm doing, luckily. Oh, okay, so there we go. Say okay. Try that again, this time with a different module. Time metro pitch this time, let's go for five. Twice the size. Gonna move that guy. Let's click that. I'm just gonna move it and have a quick look here. Otherwise everything sorry, everything the same, otherwise the teeth are different. You can see here that uh, it's essentially a zoom, like apart from the fact that we're dictating things like root uh, fillets and all the rest, but this is double sized teeth. So it's, diametral pitch is essentially just a, well, one way to think of it is just a sort of a setup scale for the whole thing. You want to make sure you use the diametral pitch constantly. So if we go for another spur here, Diametral pitch 10. This time, let's go for, as they call it, right? Look at it in the book here, 30. We expect the pitch down to 3, because 30 divided by 10, 3. Everything else the same, same backlash. Say, so, okay. Two size, the hole might be a little big, but uh, it's fine. And then our last size that we have is a 90. Biggest. There we go. Let's rename those guys so we know which one's which. A. B. C. And leave those numbers on there because it's nice to know. Perfect. Let's start putting these in place. I'm going to hide the last, uh, the second and third gear. This one's in the right spot, but it's facing the wrong way. It's misoriented. Joint is our friend here. Um, I'm going to use the, if you've been looking at any of the previous videos, I'm going to use the origin in here and actually joint up the entire component, not just the body. Uh, this is, I would argue, a good habit. So let's go with that. So joint to G. Now it's tempting to try and click on it, get it somewhere in the middle, all this sort of stuff. But what I want to do is use the origin, the I want to use the component. Now, it won't let me unless I show the origin. And sometimes the body gets in the way, so let's do that. So you'll notice which way this is pointing right now. So for my second choice, and it will naturally go to this because of the plane I sketched on, it'll go to the other 90 degree angle. And I have motion from my practice run here, Revolute Z. You might have to change this. It's probably rigid right now. Revolute. And then the Z is along the Z of the component. So not the global Z, but the component Z. It's facing the wrong way for me. And I'm just gonna make sure the body's there. So the body has went with the component. That all looks good. Let's try it. Yep. Nice. Next, I'm going to hide that, do the next J, origin hide, sorry, origin, hide the body, pick the component, and where it's going. Make sure you get in the right direction. 
not that way, that way. Wrong face, show the body, looks good, try it out, if you can grab it, there we go, nice. Next, it's all very fun, J, show, hide, pick, and pick, you might have to flip, make sure the body went with it, perfect. No, that's all fine. No, that's not fine. So you can edit these guys. They tend to be in the start position is their zero. You can adjust their, their offset. So right click, edit joint. This one is off kilter. We can see a kind of a ghost. And this is the angle we want to change. 30 teeth. That's exactly six. It does snap. Say okay. So look at backlash. Uh huh. So there's various ways to run assemblies uh, inside of Fusion. Let's try, just out of interest, let's try doing a contact set. Uh, you have to enable contact sets first. You'll get a folder then you want to create a new contact set between these two components now you must be careful with this don't drag it fast we'll try dragging it oh, there we go so it does work if you pull too fast it'll get a little bit stuck but now you can see what backlash does now yeah you have to be careful with this. Um, it is very, you can see the problem here. It's touching in two spots right now. And as it slides up, it'll disengage. So this is, this is quite serious. It, it does work, but it's not, um, I wouldn't call it happy and in, in sort of more in any sort of way. So you have to be a little careful with this. We are going to go ahead here and disable the contact sets. Because if I want to drive three, four, five gears all at once, it's going to it's going to crash my video card or my computer altogether, whoever runs those calculations. So what I want to do instead is drive these guys. It's not completely realistic, but eh, it's not bad. So let's do a motion link from the first to the second. You can reverse them, do all sorts of things. You can see right now it's not working though. Let's stop animating that. So we do have a ratio here. If you remember back, this is 60 teeth, six, 30 teeth, three. So it's half the size. So what if I say times 0.5? No. Maybe it's the other way around, times two. It's kind of hard to see what's going on here. Oh, there we go, reverse. It seems to be working, it's going quite fast. Say okay, try it out. It's not touching because of the backlash. But in reality, of course, it would You'd be a little bit of slack and then it would move very slightly and then crash into the opposition. If we want to see how far that is, you should be able to measure right in here. See here that our pitch circles are very slightly off. Could just be a artifact of the, oh, tiny. It's just an artifact. So we could measure this. I don't know if we can, let's see if we can try it. That's close-ish. Let's turn on the Delta. 
0 0.06, 0 0.03, it's, it's kind of in there. We had typed in 0 0.01. So altogether, kind of, it's in the vicinity. And again, there's ways to calculate it. We won't get into it, but it does work. Nice. It's cool. Now I can't go back to zero here. I can just click it and type in zero. Nice. Now the temptation is to use this little gear, the pinion, to drive the bigger wheel here. Big, that's not a wheel, bigger gear. However, I'm gonna actually drive everything off this blue gear. So let's do another motion link. And before we said times two, this time we're gonna be saying divide by 90, 60, 1.5. They should be going the same way because this reverses here and then reverses again. So the two big gears are going in the same direction. So not reversed. Let's try that. Nice. The good thing is Fusion lets us do either way. And yeah, that's linked links back and forth. You don't have to start with the start one. Perfect. If you want, reset that back to zero. Now, we're not quite done yet because we're missing two gears. So let's go ahead here and figure out which one we have to copy. Just going to do a simple copy paste. That's the one. Copy paste. There's one. Whatever, we'll move it later. And paste again. Okay, so we've got gear B23, and there's the first one. So they're the same component. They're just overlapping each other right now. So if I hide them, you'll see what's going on. There's the third one. There's the second one. If we want, we can see what's going on. We can move these guys. So that's the second one third one just looking for that hash mark let's do some joints i want to put this it doesn't really matter let's go clockwise so one two three so two let's hide three that's the one pick the origin and the point and because it's all copy pasted it should have the same correct alignments say okay Show the last one, joint again. And now we're all, well, we're almost done. Hold on here, ah, they don't move. So let's do another motion link. That works, but not really because it's not in the right spot. We said six and four. That's it. We can do this in any order. We can do this one first. Let's edit the joint again. And then do a motion link. And these are just one to one. And the preview shows everything running right or correctly. It's nice. It's kind of done. Let's just have a look where those parameters are sitting. Or if there are parameters, it should be at the top level. Motion links, revolute joints. Oh, there's that six. Six. This one's slightly off. Let's call it six. No, that's D32. If we want, we can spread that around. So that if we do change these, for example, to 12, it should still work. No. What about 18? There we go. So 
you can see how it would maybe control everything. It's the reason this is because it's six away from zero. So it's a span of 12 degrees for each tooth. So that's six works. And just to make sure our logic is right, minus six. Yep. So that's all fine. Perfect. So now we can adjust everything at once. So now if we want, we can adjust this one. And if we put this back to say 12, we'd find them all off. There we go. Parameterized gearing. Well, not really, but parameter position gearing. And that's it. We now have our gear running. Everything's going well. It's not completely correct. It's not running off of a motion, uh, sorry, a contact set, but it is running correctly. The next step would be to attach your gears, uh, shafts, sorry, to each of these gears, and you'd be able to run your whole assembly correctly. Um, as a final comment here, uh, quite often you end up with a bunch of peripherals left behind. So for example, all these origins, it's painful to go through and find them all. One way you can get rid of it, just move my stuff here a bit so you can see this. Uh, one thing you can do is under object visibility, you can find, for example, work features. You can show and hide various things all at once. So for example, you can show, turn off everything and then just look for axes. Uh, this is quite useful. Uh, if you're trying, if you've got a big complicated assembly, you're just trying to look for example, just axes, which is more than enough to show rotation. Anyway, there we go. That's how to uh, model a somewhat interesting gear train from scratch with fusion using importantly scripts and add-ins there are others in here bolts bottles all that sort of stuff try them out uh, you can write your own if you want to get into that sort of stuff you can bring in spline S S C S csvs intersections so on and so forth um, there are quite a lot out there and it can be quite useful the details doesn't really say very much usually, just great through. Spur gear and it says who did it, which of course is pleasant for that person. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Over to you.